happened in here? Welcome back to the Resident Evil The Complete Story. All information collected here is from the Resident Evil Wiki, the regular Wiki, and the Umbrella Project. Resident Evil 5 divided a lot of fans with this delivery. So what did you think of this game? Personally, I loved the co-op aspect and have some rather fond memories of playing this amazing action game. Wait, what do you mean it's supposed to be a horror game? We cut to 2006 where Wesker just killed off his creator, Spencer, for all the experiments done to him. His creator, you ask? Let me explain, as I haven't up to this point. Spencer believed that the world was in an unacceptable state and that it would bring the fall of mankind. He wanted to usher in the new world order with a new human race and himself as the ruler of this utopia. Sometime after founding Umbrella, Spencer began to put his vision of forcing evolution of man through his work with the virus into effect. This part we know, as is the overall plot to the main series, force evolution through the use of this virus and then use it as a biological weapon. What I didn't mention up to this point in our story is the fact that Spencer has children with above average intelligence kidnapped when they were younger. The purpose was to mold these children to serve Spencer. All the children captured for this project were given the surname Wesker. Spencer had all the Wesker children placed into different areas of Umbrella to make sure that they received the best educations possible in any field that they chose to pursue. None of them were aware that they were being monitored and molded as Spencer saw fit. One child stood out in this project, Albert Wesker. Spencer thought that if all children could be like him, then they would achieve his utopia. All children were given samples of the progenerator virus to see if they could be enhanced further, and all the children eventually died off. That is, except for Specimen 13, Albert Wesker, and Specimen 12, Alex Wesker. We don't know what happened with Alex Wesker, and we're hoping we're going to find out in a future game. Let's get back to 2006. Wesker has been gone for quite a few years, gathering all the research that he could acquire. During his searches, though, he came across Project W, the Wesker Project, and realizing that he was nothing more than an experiment to Spencer, he went to Spencer's mansion. Wesker is furious, and he kills Spencer. But guess who just arrived right then due to the fact that everyone knew Spencer's location, apparently? Chris and Jill are here, and they see a dead Spencer and Wesker standing over his body. Wesker sees Chris and decides that he's going to finish off Chris once and for all. Using his enhanced speed and strength, he very easily defeats Chris and Jill. So what are they going to do? Jill sees no other option, and she lunges at Wesker who's being caught off guard, so he gets pushed out the window with Jill still holding on. The two of them fall down the cliffs outside of Spencer's mansion, and their bodies are lost. Three months pass, and the BSAA searches for Jill, but they can't even find her body, so they presume her dead. What actually happened, though, was they both survived the fall, and Wesker took Jill's body and put it into cryostasis so he could tend to her wounds. His plan was to get revenge on Chris, finally, by using Jill as a test subject for his newest virus, the Ouroborovirus. But things didn't go quite as he planned, because Jill has a mutated strain of the T-virus inside of her. You see, the vaccine she received from Carlos back in Raccoon City didn't actually get rid of the virus, but it put it into a dormant state. Wesker begins to do a lot of testing on Jill, and due to the cryostasis and the fact that he was doing such extensive testing, Jill's hair changes to a blonde color, and her skin went very pale. But it also gave her enhanced speed and strength similar to his, but it also made her susceptible to being controlled. Poor Jill. Wesker then goes back to Excella, and he gives her samples of the Plaga virus and his own Ouroborovirus for them to perfect. The Plega sample secures her a position in the Tricell organization. Let's get back to Chris, who's being dispatched to Africa to work with Shiva. They've been sent here to apprehend Ricardo Irving before he can sell a BOW on the black market. Things go to shit rather quickly, though, as they discover that the locals are being converted by parasites and the other BSAA teams are missing. As they continue to go around the village, Chris eventually finds a photo of Jill whom he thought died at the mansion five years ago. 
After finding the other BSAA teams, Chris refuses to return to headquarters because he needs to know if Jill is alive and his new partner Shiva goes with him to find her. They head to the local marshlands based on a couple of clues and eventually they catch up to Ricardo Irving and finish him off and his giant mutated head. His final words direct them to the nearby cave if they want to learn more about everything. Inside the cave, they find the flower that started everything, the Progenerator Flower. They also see Tricell Tets all over the place and realize that Tricell is continuing Umbrella's research and that the newest virus is the Ouroborovirus. They go deeper into the cave and find tubes used to hold human test subjects and eventually find one marked Jill. Chris goes nuts trying to find her and realizes that the tube is empty. But he does find evidence that Tricell CEO Excella is plotting with Wesker to unleash the Ouroboro virus across the entire globe. Why would you infect the entire globe with this virus? Wesker hopes to sort out the survivors and create his new breed of humanity. Chris chases after Excella, but they are stopped by Wesker and a hooded figure. The hooded figure turns out to be our enhanced and currently evil Jill. Excella and Wesker leave as Chris and Jill fight it out. In the end, they remove the device controlling Jill, and after a brief reunion, she tells Chris she'll be fine. He has to stop Wesker. Chris and Shiva chase after Wesker and end up on board a Tricell tanker, where Wesker reveals that he's betrayed Excella, and she mutates into a giant monster thanks to the virus. Well, they discover that Wesker needs to maintain an exact amount of the virus so that he can keep up his superhuman speed and strength, any less or any more, and it would act as poison to him. So they eventually catch back up to him, and after a few fights, they're able to hold him down, and they begin to inject him with more doses of the virus than he can handle. A wounded Wesker then takes a bomber jet from the tanker and tries to flee. But Chris and Shiva continue to chase him, and eventually they take out his bomber jet, and it crash lands into a volcano. An enraged Wesker injects himself with more virus, mutating himself into a massive beast, and the final epic fight begins. It takes RPGs from Chris and Shiva to finally finish off Wesker, and with that, Chris and Shiva are picked up by Jill and they all leave the area. Wesker and his organization are completely destroyed at this point, and it allows Sherry Birkin, the girl that Leon saved back in Resident Evil 2, to gain a little more freedom as she becomes a US agent. That's going to be important in Resident Evil 6. Tricell is also hit with a dozen human rights violations, and they're officially shut down. Now it's time to bring you the last animated movie and the last game in the series, so join us in the next few days as we finish up Resident Evil finally. But while you wait, why don't you go enjoy our other stories and our comedies and the lore meets reality and our Let's Play channel and all the other crazy stuff we make for you. Make sure you follow us on Facebook and Twitter and we're going to go play more Resident Evil.